last time around for the New York Mets in game number six, leading three games to two. Bob Nepper working with a two-hitter will be pitching to Lynn Dykstra, Mookie Wilson, and Kevin Mitchell. Unless David Johnson uh, decides to send somebody up. Terry Nepper, who's watching the game, and she seems as composed as her husband. <laughs> Well, we'll have some fun with that tomorrow night. If there is a tomorrow night. Right now, Bob Nepper has to get out three more nets. Remember tonight, here on ABC, the American League Championship Series, Game 7 between the Angels and Red Sox, 8 Eastern Time from Fenway Park in Boston. at the plate. Walling comes in at third. Doug Harvey calls time. There's some steamers that come down out of the stands in the left field corner. So they'll tidy that up. And to reiterate, the Mets were three base runners through the first 11 innings in yesterday's game. They've had three base runners in today's game and on the heels of the Reykjavik aborted the summit, I guess it would be appropriate to say that Nepper has had no problems with arm control. Did you stay up late for that one? <laughs> I was traveling last night. <laughs> traveling could be boring. Yes, you're right. It was. <laughs> Pepper going right at Baxter. Anderson and Smith now in the Houston bullpen. Two strike kicks. Wouldn't chase it. One and two. Lifted, right center in the gap, Hatcher on the move, can't get it, Baxter puffing around second, heading for third, he'll stand at third with a triple. Or he's strong. How in the world did he hit that breaking ball that appeared to be off the plate that far in the pool alley? Watch. One-handed. That shows you how strong he is. Hatcher runs and runs the ball, carries and carries, and Billy can't get to it. But Dykstra is showing tremendous strength. Out on his front foot, one-handing the ball, about 380 feet to right center. And the Mets now break that string. They finally have a leadoff man aboard at third base in a 3-0 ball game, and here is Mookie Wilson. Corner. I don't think Nepper threw him a bad pitch at all. I don't either. You just got to tip your hat to Dykstra in a situation like that. Back two on Wilson. Lead off man, Dykstra at third with that triple. Mitchell is waiting. Wilson at the plate. Little bleeder off the glove of Garland. And Baxter ambles in from third. It's a three to one ball game. A handle hit, hit it right off the fists and had just enough on it to get it over Doran's glove. Doran does not appear to pick this ball up. He kind of freezes, and then he comes in on the ball. 
by coming in on the ball. He technically does not try to catch the ball on the way down, but at its zenith. I think and if he had seen it, Tim, he would have made I go back so. two steps in his season. I agree with you. I don't think he saw the ball. To Kevin Mitchell, the pitch is high, ball one. Pepper had two strikes on both those hitters. Unable to get either. That's a high jump. Cut off by the third baseman, Wallen, who throws out Mitchell. The base runner, Wilson, goes to second. You've got one out. Dennis Minke, the third base coach, and Hal Lanier reminding all the outfielders to throw the ball to second base on a base hit to the outfield. Don't worry about the runner at second. He is meaningless. The guy to get is Keith Hernandez. Throw the ball to second. That's what those two fingers mean that Lanier just put up. But as Hernandez stands at the plate, he represents the tying run in a 3-1 ball game. And if Hernandez gets on, I think Nepper's out of there. This is just high. Smith is ready. Carter waiting. Two for Key Fernandez. You're beginning to see, I think, that why the New York Mets won 108 ball games. They've got some character. They really do. They were never ahead in any of the games at Shea Stadium until they won two of them. That's fouled away. Dykstra won game three with a two-run homer. In that game, they were never ahead until they won it. They lost game four, three to one, and they were never ahead in yesterday's game until they won it in the bottom of the 12th. And they never have been ahead in this game. They haven't even been in this game until now. Remember that Nepper had a 4-0 lead on him in game three and couldn't hold him. All right, 2-1 to Hernandez. Ball is hitting the gap. Matches on his horse, going, going, can't get it. It's against the wall. Here comes Mookie Wilson, round third. He will score. Hernandez at second with a double. It's a 3-2 ball game. And Hal in the air comes bouncing out of the dugout on his way to the mound, and he'll go to Dave Smith right here. So Nepper in almost complete control. He has stifled the Mets. But here in the top of the ninth inning, the Mets now put up two runs. They have a total of five hits. Bob Nepper goes to the clubhouse. A little history lesson is in order. You remember back in 1980, game five, the eighth inning, Nolan Ryan working to the Philadelphia Phillies. The series tied up at two games apiece. Ryan had a three-run lead. And the Phillies came back to tie it. They won it on a Gary Maddox single in the 10th inning. Here's the base hit by Hernandez. The risk of falling behind the good hitters. And Nepper, who has been ahead all day, pitching a masterful ball game, gives up the fastball to Hernandez. And Hernandez now in scoring position, a 3-2 game. Wow. He's a tough guy, Hernandez. Here's a tough out, and there's a tough pitcher who pitched a sparkling ball game. That's Bill Robinson. 
batting coach for the New York Mets, standing out at second base, talking to Keith Hernandez, and Dave Smith now comes into the game. Primary pitch is a fork ball, but um, everybody was of the opinion that it was a fork ball that didn't fork enough, and that Baxter hit out to beat him. He will pitch to Gary Carter. Darrell Strawberry to the on-deck circle. The tying run is out at second base in the top of the ninth inning. 3-2 Houston. A game that Houston must win or else they'll go home for the winner. They got all three of the runs back in the first inning off Pablo Hida. Remember, Keith Hernandez does not possess good speed at second base. So if Carter hits it sharply to the outfield, there may be a play on Hernandez at home. Dave Smith has had 33 saves for Houston during the regular season. High with the fastball, ball one. The on-deck man is Strawberry. Leads a little on that call. Through a fastball. Red high by Fred Brockland to the plate umpire. Two and zero to Carter. He won it yesterday with a belt winning single. That's on the corner. So Smith has come out of the bullpen. He's thrown three fastballs to Gary Carter. He has a count of two and one. Two and two. Throwing him four fastball. The 2-0 and the 2-1 fastball on the outside corner. Let's see now if he comes with his outfit. The fourth ball. Side and the count is full, three and two. And Smith takes a walk. There's nobody in the pin back of Smith. Now, straight back. He's simply challenging Carter with fastballs. Well, at 3-2, he may not want to throw the football here. Do have first base open, but Strawberry's up next. You want to get Carter out of there. Strawberry has hurt Smith this year with a two-run homer to tie a ball game in this ballpark. Johnson changes to the other foot. It's funny how the glaring weakness of the Astros, the edge that gave the Mets the left-handed reliever in the bullpen, and that's the one thing that's absent in the Astros staff, is a left-hander in the bullpen. Jim Deshays has not made an appearance yet. And now you're in a situation where it could be a very, very big point. Darrell Strawberry against Dave Smith. Tying run, Hernandez at second base. 
inside corner for a strike. Strawberry, one for five, career-wise against Dave Smith. That one hit, however, was out of here. Low and blocked by Ashby. And a good play by Alan Ashby. And that ball got combined, and it's second and third, and surely the Astros would have had to drop Darrell Strawberry to get the ninth. Only one out in the top of the ninth inning. Two runs in, tying run. He's out at second base and Keith Fernandez. Inside. And again, Smith going with his best card book. Challenging the Mets hitters. Down on Strawberry is 2-1 and one after he walked Carter. Inside again. 3-1. and one. Highly uncharacteristic of Dave Smith. Normally with excellent control. And that ball almost took Darryl Strawberry in the right knee. Anderson up in the Houston bullpen now. Larry Anderson. Foul back. And it's a full count. Three balls and two strikes to Darrell Strawberry. You have an interesting situation here. First and second, one out. A 3-2 count. Do you send the runner? Strawberry led the Mets in strikeouts this year. I doubt that the runners will be moving. We'll see. Anderson Hurry in the Houston bullpen. High drive, right side foul. Upper deck. Oh! The crowd oohs and ahs over that a little bit. And the count remains three and two. Walking. The bases are loaded. The tying run goes over the third with one out and Ray Knight coming to the plate. Dave Smith, after Hernandez double, comes in to walk Carter. Now he has walked Strawberry. And with only one out, Hernandez, the tying run, is at third. The Astro infield playing in double play depth. And that's proper because Knight is not a fast runner. Even on a less than average hit ball, they will probably have a chance to turn the double play on Ray Knight if he puts it at somebody. Outside corner. Knight deep. Strike one. Danny Heap on deck. Swing it back for the Mets. Anderson now slows down a bit in the pen. He's ready. A double play right here would be the big play for Houston. Would it ever? Foul back. Two strikes on Ray Knight. shallow in right field. Knight does not have a lot of power the other way. There you see Kevin Bass. Hatcher deep in center and Cruz deep in left. Two strikes. 
strike pitch. Outside, one and two. The fourth ball has just missed outside. Now Lanier's going out to the mound, and I'll guarantee you, if he argues about a ball or a strike pitch right here, then he's out of the ball game. What he's going to do is allow Brocklander to come out right now. This is Lanier's baby Brocklander. Don is upset over it. Nicky Vaughn now being pushed away from the pitching mound. Back to his position, and Brocklander has come to the mound. Now Lanier now is engaging the Brocklander conversation. Balls and strikes are not a subject of debate. I think Hal Lanier intimidating Brocklander right now. He wanted this pitch, and it appeared to be just off the plate. It looked like it was a ball. But I'll tell you, if I'm Ray Knight right now, I'm swinging at anything. Because if Brocklander is intimidatable, well, Lanier just did it to him. And he may call anything that Smith throws up there a strike right now. So if you're Ray Knight, you're up there hacking. Two balls, two strikes, one out, tying on third base, top of the ninth inning. 3-2, Houston leads. And that top foul straight back. <laughs> I'm telling you, oh, me. <laughs> Load it up. They've done it virtually every game. Fourth ball was pretty close that pitch tonight. It certainly was. <laughs> two and two. High fly ball. Gap right center. Hatcher goes over. Makes no. It is fast cutting it off. Here comes Hernandez from third. He scores. The game is tied on the sacrifice fly. Deep to right center by Ray Knight. in the world do you stay calm here? Well, you don't. You don't. Ray Knight on the high fastball drives Bass and Hatcher back. It's Bass that makes the play. Carter going to third base. Strawberry going to second. And we have ourselves a tie ball game. And Wally Backman has now picked up the bat and is swinging it and coming to the plate. The go-ahead run now has moved over to third base. Gary Carter. Bob Nepper's got to be thinking, how in the world did I come away with a no decision in this game? He had absolutely shut him down until the top of this inning. Baxter let off, hit a triple, banged off the wall in right center. Wilson singled. Mitchell was an out, the third, then Hernandez double. And they're going to walk Backman. I'll tell you, this is an interesting call on the part of Hal Lanier, and I'll tell you why. Smith came in and walked Carter. He walked Strawberry, and now by intentionally walking Backman, he's loading the bases and no place to put Danny Heath, the pinch hitter. Smith has been wild. Heath will be hitting for Santana, the shortstop. So Smith coming on in relief, but never. As you said, walk Carter, walk Strawberry. Now they walk back. The Mets have tied the game at three in the top of the ninth inning. And Danny Heath is at the plate. One for three in the championship series. 
a former Astro who was here in 1980 in the fight against the Phillies. Kirkman in there for a strike. Two out now. The base is loaded with Carter over at third. Strawberry is down at second. And Beckman at first. But Heat is the man. Two strikes. That was a fourth ball. McDowell is in the New York bullpen. And we'll see him in the bottom of the ninth inning. Outside. The fourth ball to be effective has to be down. And whenever it's down and a runner at third base, always the chance of a wild pitch or a pass ball. We went 12 yesterday in New York. And Smith may be having a little trouble with his mechanics because he's wobbled a couple of times coming off the mound and thrown the ball quite high. Hasn't worked much in this area. 2-2. Two, two. Three and two, there is no place to put him. Carter telling Strawberry to make sure he pitches. Smith will work from the stretch to hold the runners just in case of a long single. Three, two to Danny Heath. Foul ball. That was a fourth ball, too. Of yes, all it was. Things, a 3-2 fourth ball with the bases loaded, two outs. Of course, he's a good fastball hitter. Yep. Three three ball game. Go ahead, Ron Carter at third. 3-2 count for Heath. High pop-up. Coming back out of play. And that was ball four. Yes, it was. Right. High, high. Anything close, you do not want to be called out in this situation. Here was the fastball from Dave Smith. Too high, but you got to you got to be hacking. That's right. That's right. Time called. Ball loose. Back of the plate. Lynn Dexter is the man on deck for New York. He started this whole thing with a triple. Off the hands, fisted back foul. Gary Carter cannot stand still at third base. And I don't blame him. Bases loaded. 3-2 count on the hitter Heath and two out at the top of the night. Stuck him out. The Mets had nine hitters to the plate at the top of the ninth inning. They score three runs. They lead three. The score is tied 3-3. And we'll be back after this message from your local station. Saturday, the college football excitement continues. Alabama quarterback Mike Shula has the Crimson Tide ranked second in the nation. They'll put their undefeated record on the line against Tennessee. For the Southwest Conference showdown as Baylor takes on Texas A&M. Coverage begins with college football today. Even today, there are still places in Europe so isolated, hardly anyone ever goes there. But UPS does. With scheduled delivery to every address in every European country it serves. At prices, other air delivery companies might find a little scary. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Hey, New York, get on my health kick. Bill, it's got the power I need for pure energy. Kick, so get on my health kick, baby. Oh, America, save the 
In March 1986, the Saab 9000 was put through a series of tests at Le Mans and Mont Louis in France. When it was over, 